Hi, Craig here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at a die inverter. This is a five kilowatt hybrid inverter that's listed on the CEC website and is full compliant to AS4777. It has two independent solar trackers under here, which is capable of inputting 7,500 watts. The string voltage is a little bit low in my opinion at 500 volts, but still totally acceptable. You've got on and off and isolation switches over here for the solar, and that's the on and off for the inverter. You can see you've got a display here. Underneath here, you've got Wi-Fi dongle. And so far that dongle has worked faultlessly. I've had this inverter up and running now and been playing with it for a couple of weeks. It has three input outputs. So it has a grid input here. It has a load output terminal here. And the third terminal is a generator or a grid tie inverter. So what I've done is I've wired in a Feronius Primo here, which is um, set to AS4777 grid code. And as you can see, we're outputting 362 watts, which is being fed directly into the die inverter. Now you'll notice you can just tap on any of these disc screens. So for the battery, you can see here, you can see state of charge, voltage, uh, amps coming in, going out, power, etc., temperature. And then you can cl click on the little BMS setting and you can get your BMS data. So as you can see, I've connected it up to a couple of server rack style batteries. So both of these are 51.2 volt nominal, 100 amp hour, and CAN bus between them and the CAN bus cable running back up into the die inverter there. Set your dip switches and as I said you can see your CAN bus data which is great. You can also select the grid so you can see what's going on with the grid here. So what I've done is I've simulated the grid input to the die inverter by my home system so I've got it plugged into the input side here of the, of the test rig. It sees the home system as the grid and that's been operating perfectly as well. So you've got graphs and all sorts of history here. Click on here, you can see the Feronius is uh, giving us 401 watt. It's only early in the morning, so no problem there. I've also tested the uh, frequency shifting and how that works. So basically you go into here, you go into use gen port because as i said the grid tie inverter gets plugged into the gen port and you select micro inverter input what i've done is i've kept it tight so it basically will turn the grid input on at 97 percent and turn it off at 99 percent and you can see there the frequency shifting as 51.95 hertz so the advantage of having AC coupled solar input, it leaves your DC coupled solar here ports available. So not only can you have say five kilowatt of solar on the Feronius here, for example, you can add a further seven and a half kilowatt of PV on this, um, which I really like, it, that's great. Um, you can parallel these units up to 16, I believe. So as I said, this is the five kilowatt unit but they're available in single phase all the way up to 16. So just looking at a couple of the settings here. So you can go into the basic setting, for example, that's where you put your time and date in. Um, and you can also sync the time if you have the Wi-Fi port connected. Uh, that all seems to work fine. And select your language there. You can also go into go into your system work mode and you can see that I've set loads first as the priority of the system working mode. So what it'll do is it'll take the solar and distribute the solar to the load first, to the battery second, and then when the battery's full, it'll export to the grid if you're allowed to export. So under this scheduling mode here, you'll see I've set the battery to 35%. And then I've said charge from the grid between these times, which everything's selected, 
for every day of the week if the battery gets below 35%. This is the part where you select the system to go into parallel mode. So as a default, it's selected as slave, which works fine for a single inverter. And you would simply hit the parallel icon there and change, say, this unit to the master and the second unit to slave and so on. And you would change the Modbus port accordingly. So the first master would become O1 and the slave would become O2. This is where you select your grid code, for example. So we're on the Australian grid code here and all of that works perfectly. Okay, so what you can see is I'm simulating a load here now. So I've got 1.27 kilowatts of load and you can see uh, 860 watts is coming from the battery and the balance is coming from the Feronius input. Now, if I was to change some settings on there, for example, uh, I want to hold the state of charge of the battery a little bit higher, I can simply go into the app down here. You can do it on the screen here, but I want to show you on the app. So you just go into the Die Cloud app, go into Quick Settings, And you see here, you've got a couple of settings. You've got self-consumption mode and force charge mode. But you can see in the self-consumption mode, you can set a reserve capacity of the battery. So for example, if I change that to 86%, hit done and hit save, we're at 85%, you'll see. So once those settings are accepted, which is usually pretty quick, there you go. Now the battery will become idle or thereabouts and it's going to pull the load from the grid. So you can see there, I'm pulling one kilowatt of load. Nothing's coming out of the battery now and it's coming off the grid and the balance coming off the Feronius for the string inverter input. Change that back, take it back to say 50%, done, save. You'll see the grid will turn off, there we go, and the load now comes back out of the battery. The other thing you can do in quick settings is you can go force charge mode. Click that. Hit save, and if you come back here now, once that setting is saved, there we go. Now the grid is pulling two kilowatt and we're charging the battery. So that will now charge the battery to 100%. You turn that force charge mode off simply by going back into self consumption mode. Setting that to say, oh, hang on, before I do that, what will happen, do you think, if I turn the grid off? Okay, so we've said, hold the battery, and um, we're on force charge mode. And if I was to turn the grid off now, so you see, input off, let's see what happens gone into off-grid mode momentarily it throws the Feronius off that'll reboot and come back on so we've got no loads and no output and that's because of the forced charge mode that I've got the system in if I was to now take that back and set the battery back to self-consumption mode at 50%, which means I want to keep 50% of the battery in reserve capacity in case the grid fails, you'll see the load comes straight back on and everything works as expected. Fronius is still booting up. That takes about two minutes, so we'll just let that boot back up and we can turn the grid input 
back on. It takes a little bit to cycle itself, but it'll come back on in, a, in about 30 seconds or so. So at the moment, all the load has been taken from the battery because it's still in off-grid mode and the string inverter has not come back in just yet. If we had solar inputted directly to the inputs down here, the MC4 connections, you would see that solar there. So I've been working with this inverter now for about two weeks, trying all sorts of different things, trying to break it, uh, you know, self-consumption on the batteries, grid mode, um, you know, off-grid mode, as I said. Um, it all just seems to work. I, I don't really seem to have any dramas with it at all. There you go. You probably just heard the relays click on the Ferenius, so that means the solar will start outputting. There it is, it's ramping up. Relay's just clicked on the die, or die, however you want to pronounce it. And you can see the solar's now ramping up there. That'll keep coming up. There you go, you can just see it's just about come up now. If you can see that screen, excuse me. So 450 watts, which you'll see here. 450 watts of input so it just works guys i'm i'm really um happily surprised how well this day works the translation from chinese to english is a little bit literal but once you get your mind around it um, and understand how it works it, it's not too bad at all um you can buy an optional Ethernet adapter, so you pull out the Wi-Fi dongle and plug in the Ethernet dongle. It comes with, oh, let me focus there, some CT meters as you can see. I believe there's three in the box. I have tested the solar input on the MC4, the, the twin trackers here, and that all works perfectly. I haven't tested a generator input yet, so I'm going to be doing that in the next couple of days. And what I also want to do is uh, plug the AC coupled solar in with some DC coupled solar and see how that all works with state of charge, maybe kicking the Feronius off a little bit early, finishing the charge curve off with the DC coupled solar, see how the batteries react with that. Um, but so far, so good. So I think that's enough of an intro on the um, the day hybrid inverter. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I will continue testing this inverter over the next couple of months uh, and play around with it and try and develop it, get a bit more understanding of the interface. But for now, that's it and stay tuned for the next one.